Hello everyone. Today we are going to start our chapter 3, Fiber to Fabric. In this chapter we are going to learn about wool, silk, life cycle of silk moth, how are silk worm reared, how is silk fiber proceed, and what are the health hazards of the people working in the wool or silk industries? Introduction <coughs> Clothes are one of our basic needs of life. Fabrics are made, of, made from yarn and yarn from fibers. The natural fibers like cotton, jute, flax are derived from the plants. Natural fibers. From where do we obtain the natural fibers? The natural fibers are obtained from plants. We know that wool and silk, they are obtained from the animals. We have natural fibers obtained from the plants and natural fibers obtained from the animals. These fibers are used to make different types kinds of fabric. So see these fibers which we, which we get from the plants or animals we use for making different kind of fabrics. First we are going to study about wool. Wool is obtained from the thick coat of the hair which grows on the bodies of the sheep and goat. These hairs are known as fleece. Okay. Wool is obtained from the coat of hair they are obtained from the hairs of the animals okay which grow on the bodies of the animals like sheep or goat okay they are called as fleece wool is soft light durable elastic and wrinkle resistant fiber it is highly porous and traps the air in between the spaces of the fibers. Okay, it, con it is highly porous. It contains small, small pores and it traps the air in that pores so that the heat from the body cannot be go out. It acts as an insulator and does not allow the body heat to escape. So it acts as an insulator. So we know that we wear the woolen cloth during the winters. Why? Because it does not allow our body heat to go out. So it acts as an insulator. It keeps the animal warm and woolen fabric keeps us warm during the winter. So we wear the woolen fabric during the winter. Why? Because they keep our body warm. The finest wool is obtained from the fleece of Mariano sheep. Okay, The best wool which we get is from the Mariano sheep. Wool is also obtained from the fur or the hair of goat, yak, camel and rabbit. Okay, even we can get the wool from the camels, rabbits, goat and yak. Next, processing fibers into wool. There are different steps which helps, which helps uh, which which are carried to process the hair obtained from the animals into wool. So the following steps are carried out to process the hair obtained from the animals into the wool. The steps are shearing, scoring, sorting, separating, dyeing and rolling. The first one is shearing. In this process the thick growth of the hair of the sheep along with the layer of the skin is removed. Shearing means removal of the hair from the body. Okay, It can be done manually or with the machine. Shearing means removing of the hair, of, hair from the body of the animal. Shearing is carried out mainly during the summer so that the hair grow back in the winter. So shearing means removing of the hair from the body of the animal. This can be done manually with the help of the razor or clippers or a pair of scissors. Next, after removing the hair, the next step is to wash it with the detergent. Okay, that is called as scoring. Means washing the 
here with the detergent so that it can uh, it can uh, we can remove the dirt grease and sweat that step is called as scoring next sorting sorting in this process that cleaned wool is sorted according to the texture okay they are sorted next separating separating of the fibers now these can also be seen uh, on the some sweaters that we wear they are separated and process of scoring is repeated okay separating means taking out the best wool next dyeing after separating the best wool the next step is to give the color okay the hair of the sheep or goat is naturally black brown or white in color now they have to be dyed into different colors that is called as dyeing the last step is rolling in this the fibers are straightened they 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 make them straight and combed and rolled into yarns okay they make them straight then they are combed and they rolled into the yarn okay that is called as rolling these are the different process uh, these are the different steps involved in the processing of fiber into wool next silk silk is obtained as a long continuous strand from the thread like filament which uh, which the silk worm spins around itself to form cocoon okay silk is obtained from cocoons they are nothing but they are thread like filaments that the silk worm spins around itself okay it is a natural protein secreted by the larva of the silk worm so it secretes it take outs the protein from the mouth okay and uh, it is a natural protein secreted by the larva of the silk worm the fiber is soft strong durable and luster it is a soft it is strong and it is durable luster as mean shining it burns with the smell of charred, charred meat how it burns if we burn that silk it gives the smell of the charred meat the rearing of silk worm on the commercial scale to produce silk is called as sericulture what is sericulture sericulture is nothing but the rearing of silk worm on the large scale to produce the silk is called as sericulture next life cycle of silk moth <coughs> there are four stages in the life cycle of silk moth that is egg larva pupa and adult these are the four stages in the life cycle of silk moth the female silk moth lays egg which hatches into the into black worm like larvae so silk first the female silk moth lays egg this egg hatches into larvae the larva of the silk moth is known as caterpillar or silk worm this larva feeds on the mulberry leaves mulberry leaves they eat the mulberry leaves continuously and and they grow into the size when they eat mulberry leaves during that time they shed their skin for four times they take out the skin for four times they shed their skin for four times and this process of shedding the skin to grow into new one is called as molting molting means removal of the skin and when uh, they uh, they they eat the mulberry leaves they shed their skin for four times and this process is called as molting at the end of this period it climbs the branches of the trees and attach itself to it by weaving a net so after this after eating the mulberry leaves and after shedding the skin then then it climbs the branches of the trees and attach itself it attached itself to the branch and uh, uh, by weaving a net so they start weaving a net over him, it then it starts spinning a, a cocoon the larva continues to develop inside the cocoon so the larva is present inside that cocoon okay this stage is called as pupa stage so now this stage now they don't eat any mulberry leaves they spin the thread on on uh, uh, as a weaving net on itself and that larva changes into pupa inside that cocoon 
when the worm mature into adult moth it secretes a fluid which dissolves the silk fibers of the cocoon so that it can emerge out of it so when this pupa get completely developed changes into the adult moth then what happen it secretes it take out the fluid and it dissolves the silk fiber the cocoon the net which has been spin around itself it dissolves in that fluid and then it emerges out it comes out from that next production of silk first rearing of silk worms how we produce the silk so first step is rearing of silk worm the eggs laid by the female silk moth are collected and hatched in incubator so first the female silk moth gives the egg and these eggs are collected and they are hatched in a incubator they are made to hatch at the time when the mulberry trees grow into the new leaves so these uh, require mulberry leaves so they this process they this occurs only when they, this takes place uh, when when the mulberry trees grows into grows in, in new leaves the worms are kept on the rearing tray they keep these worms are kept in a rearing tray and feed fed on the freshly chopped mulberry leaves and they give the mulberry leaves to them so that they eat them the worms are kept on rearing tray and fed on the freshly chopped mulberry leaves about 25 to 30 days they feed the leaves continuously then they move into the tiny chamber of the tree or are provided with the twigs or branches to spin cocoon so next step is to change to spin after eating the mulberry leaves for 20 to 25 days then they move into a tiny uh, chamber tray or they are provided with the twigs twigs means small small branches of branches to spin cocoons twig means sticks the caterpillar is killed once the stage is complete otherwise what will happen the fluid secreted by the adult moth will dissolve that silk so when they change into cocoons then these cocoons were now they are killed otherwise if they change into the uh, adult silk moth they eat that they 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 secrete a fluid and the silk get dissolved in that fluid next processing of silk the silk fiber is obtained by from the cocoon by killing the insect inside it the the worms are killed when the cocoons are exposed to the heat of the sun now these uh, these worms are to be killed they are killed inside the cocoons only either they are uh, the, it can be done by boiling them in the uh, uh, they can be uh, they it can also be done by boiling the cocoons in the water or exposing them into the steam or treating them in the ovens three there are three methods to kill the Uh, worms inside the cocoons either they can put them into the boiling water or they can expose them into the steam or they can put them into the oven the process in which large number of cocoons are boiled to kill the worms are called as cooking now this process is called as cooking the sticky substance of the cooking dissolved in the hot water and the fiber separates out the method of obtaining the silk fiber from the cocoon is called as reeling now uh, reeling through the reeling process the silk is obtained from the cocoons next mulberry silk is the most common variety of silk fiber we have different other silk also mulberry silk is one of the silk tussar silk mooga silk kosa silk are some of the popular varieties of the silk in our country The quality of the silk fiber depends upon the rearing of the silk worm and reeling the process that is carried out. So the quality depends upon the how the silk worm are reared and reeling process. Next, health hazards of the workers working in wool industry. So what are the health problems? Uh, uh, health problems when the workers are working in the wool industries or silk industries. the workers engaged in sorting get infected by the bacteria so they get they come in contact with the bacteria and uh, bacteria called anthrax it causes a deadly 
disease of blood which is known as Sauter disease. So when they come in contact with a bacteria called anthrax, then a, a deadly disease, a disease which can lead to the death, that disease is caused, that is called as a Sauter diseases. The workers are generally affected by the respiratory diseases such, such as asthma and bronchitis. So the workers who are working in the wool industries or silk industries, they have a respiratory problem uh, like asthma, bronchitis, even, even uh, though they are having this, even severe headache, body ache, fever, neck pain, low back pain, eye problem are the few other health disorder which the people may suffer the workers may suffer in the wool industries. So till here the chapter has been finished. Thank you.